Hello and welcome to Stories, the True and the Fictional. We are a podcast that dives into the stories of people's lives, everyday people like you and me, or even famous people throughout history. We'll talk about TV shows, movies, books, anything where stories are involved. But it doesn't stop there. We want to get you, the listener, involved as well. So if you have a story, something funny or random that may have happened to you or a friend, send it to the true and the fictional at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. So until then, strap in. It's story time. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world, and you will be launching <laughs> the greatest air battle in the history of mankind. Mankind. That word should have new meaning for us today. We cannot be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We'll be united in our common interests. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July and you'll be once again fighting for our freedoms, not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution from annihilation. We'll be fighting for the right to live, to exist. And should we win today, the 4th of July will be no longer remembered as American holiday, but the day where the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're gonna live on. We're gonna survive. Today we celebrate our Independence Day. And that, Biden, is how you unite a nation. Anyway, welcome <laughs> to Stories <laughs> True and the Fictional. <laughs> I am your host, Chris Park. Feeling alive, feeling sorrow today. As a proud member of the Commonwealth, we of course mourn our queen. There will be never another like it in our world. We, of course, will capitalize upon that as well by hoarding all the $1, $2, and $5 notes as possible <laughs> for keepsakes and remembrance. I raise a glass to the queen. To the queen. She's uh, been a queen for a long time. I literally can't remember when she wasn't, but that's because that's how long she's ruled. Yeah, like... Yeah, she was there for a lot of wars too. I think she survived on like all of them. Yeah. Like literally all of them. That's it's got a huge loss. And we'll remember her fondly. Mm -hmm. Again, as I said before, I would date the queen. We've asked upon it as a, if it would be not only would it be my civic duty, <laughs> but I would have been proud. To do so, well, there would have been a time where you wouldn't have had a choice. Like, of course, absolutely. If you say, <laughs> like, you know, if they said date the queen, you'd have said yes, absolutely, not a quick. But you know what? I would do it. Absolutely, absolutely. I am, of course, joined by my co-host, failed musician, <laughs> turned author, and soon going to start his epic comeback after his boy band broke up after their lead singer went on to become more famous. I am, of course, talking about the fifth member of NSYNC. Jamie Bryden, how are you going, sir? I'm going all right. Sorry, you bring back flashbacks. When I think of those days, I just want to sing. Everything. Are you sad when the, finally when the group went bye-bye-bye? Well, I'm, I'm saddened that they took an idea for a song of mine and thought they'd get away with it just mm -hmm. by swiping it around because originally it was called Hi, Hi, Hi. Well, that's just, you know, that's it was just a, it, it was a greeting. It was a greetings song, a song of greetings. And then they said, sorry, mate, you got to go. Bye, bye, bye. Well, can you also elaborate on the story that you, you, you said multiple times when you're drunk that, that he did, in fact, steal sexy back from you but that was not the original meaning of the song. Could you care elaborate on the, the true meaning of what that song was really talking about? Maybe after a few drinks, um, because 
It's embarrassing that I don't know that song. <laughs> mm, of course. You've, That's you've, the, I've, I've erased it from my mind. Erase it from your memory. I from from memory I do recall the story. And it was you, Justin, riding into Bion camels. You saw a beautiful camel sump and you went, damn, that's a sexy back. And you went, what? And then all of a sudden you saw him with a pen and paper. And then there it was. The song mm. was born. Yeah, we we're, were actually both at the um in Saudi Arabia at the time at the Camel Beauty Project. Pro- uh, of course, the be- of beauty course. pageants they have over there. The um cutthroat business, that is. I, I've always wondered if they t- take such an obsession in uh the beauty of camels, considering that they can't look at their own women because they're, you know, wearing their outfits. I would think there's something more to it. From my understanding, they also give these camels cosmetic surgery or some sort of... No. Um, or is it life? So is no, it, is someone it... got caught. Oh. So, so it's like steroids, you know, like... Oh, so, so that's, that's an enhancement that we do not allow yes. on camels. So they're going to be naturally beautiful camels. I mean, I mean, this is all you, you raise an interesting point there on both beauty and sports. Where do you feel? How do you feel about steroids and sports, James? Well, you got to look at it this way it's either everyone gets to use steroids or no one gets to use steroids. And I am, you are an enlightened man, and I, I 110% agree with you. And I'd even go one step further. Mm-hmm. In international sports, say the Olympics, China, Russia, probably Great Britain and America would be not allowed to use steroids. Everyone else, go nuts. <laughs> if you want to juice up right before the event, hey, just go, just go. And you know, I want to see how many medals these countries win when the competition's uh, <laughs> at a level at a what do you call it, a level playing field. Yeah. Um, All of a sudden, this one tiny nation just be like going, and Ethiopia now is the you know <laughs> sitting at two hundred medals. No, it wouldn't be like America Samoa in the soccer. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be winning 52 nil. <laughs> they would be winning 52 nil. Again, but I, I 100% agree that if everyone takes it, it's fine. Yeah, well, it's got to be, it's got to be fair play. Mm. You know? No one or, or everyone. I hear, I hear these naysayers say, well, that's not fair because, you know, that gives them an unfair advantage. You know what else gives these people an unfair advantage? Genetics. Yeah, and I mean, like, it's just it's just like how obviously some countries are going to do better than others. Like, um, uh, like do like you know, like the African countries are really good at running, mm-hmm. you know, and I Jamaicans say, basically dominate the sprinting world, and yeah, they have done and, so for thousands of years. Yeah, and that's 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 you know, um, what they're good at, and you know, if you put them in a bobsled team, you know, it's it's a different story. Different story. <laughs> Although, to their credit. They did quite well. Now, Jamie, on unfair genetics, I want you to go to open up Google right now, young man. Mm -hmm. And I want you to type in Aiden, A-I-D-A-N. I I want you to type in the last name Hutchinson. Aiden. H-U-T-C-H-I-N-S-O-N. Correct. Yes. And then I want you to type in family. Okay. And I want you to look at a picture of these people. Um... Yeah, just any random picture. If you look at the one with the, who's standing there in the top, you know, with his family. Um, well, there's a whole lot of them. Like, there's one with his two sisters. Yeah, so there, there, there should be one with his parents as well. The, the, well, one of them you might right, think yeah, of yeah, yeah. his sister, but that's actually his mother. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's my mistake. <laughs> uh, now, people say it's unfair to take steroids. Well, what about being born into the genetic lottery of, of this man? Father was a you know college football player, not good enough to play pro, but I think he became a doctor. Mother was Miss Michigan, born six foot six. His youngest, his, sister, his eldest sister, the, is, is also the current Miss Michigan, and now he plays professional football. How is anyone meant to compete with with that kind of genetics, no, well, unless we had steroids. No, my, my question is, uh, how many of these uh, women are single? 
<laughs> and would they be considering moving to the monarchy of Australia? Well, the mother is obviously not single, but... Oh, you don't know. They could be having problems. <laughs> but I don't think I could, could... Look at the dude as well. I mean, look yeah, at yeah, the yeah. father. They're I don't think attractive. I could compete with that man. That's why you run away and you never come back. <laughs> Again, but... If I had steroids... <laughs> But genetic steroids, like like <laughs> that. That's an interesting thing. Like inject this into you, and you just suddenly become more attractive. It's now, like again, like it's like it's not like it's it's not even fair of a choice anymore. It's just basically like going. Yeah, I was born to be six foot six, prof- an athlete. My yeah. sister was a model. My other sister is a college athlete as well in her own sport. It's like going, well, give us steroids. You have genetics. <laughs> give us the steroids, and maybe we can also compete at the top level. I'm glad you're using the term steroids and not talking about something else that uh, that Hitler was big on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. You, oh, wow. Okay, we're going with Hitler conversation early. Okay. No, no, hey. I, I, just, I just said I'm glad you did that. I, I don't mean, know. Look, there are, there are anabolic steroids that make you sort of, like, that give you strength. But then there's just, you know, human growth hormones, HGH. Now, once you've hit puberty and passed your puberty, you should be able to do as much HGH as you want. That's that's how the superheroes get big, because HGH is naturally produced in your body. And if it's not helping you grow, as soon as you start hitting the gym, it'll just grow your muscle mass. Now, it still requires you to put in the work. Yeah. The lifting, the, you know, the weights, does, the does running. It kind of, does it kind of just like speed up the process? It just, yeah, it really just helps you develop the muscle much faster, yeah. much quicker. Basically, it's, but people who are strong athletes already have a high HGH level in their body because that's what yeah. gives them their power. Yeah. Let us, and look, and you look, you look at, you know, the superheroes, you look at Hemsworth and you look at, you know, um, uh, what's his face? Ca- Henry Cavill, huge dude. And mm-hmm. you look at The Rock and you say, how did you get so strong? I almost get, they say, oh, I have a diet and I, yeah, and look, that's plays part of it. But also, let's be honest, they have HGH. They injected it a few times. They gained significant muscle mass that was well beyond what they should have been. Because that, again, when Hemsworth became Thor, he was already a grown ass, like 25 year old man. Yeah. There was not, there's not much development past that point. Yeah. But when you take the HGH, yes, your body will then start growing again. <laughs> and he became power. And I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not against that. But I'm saying he's just simply leveling the playing field against the Aiden Hutchinsons of the world <laughs> by giving himself that advantage. And you know what? Kudos mm-hmm. to him. But where's it for the rest of us? Well, give it time. <laughs> well, over time, I believe, maybe maybe not so much the Hitler way of doing things, no. but you know, there would be ways to edit the genetic structure. Uh, CRISPR is one of the, the things we're talking about so we can edit our genetic structure. And maybe we can then also, you know, well, if you want society, society to be, be perfectly attractive, um, you could ship all the, the people that you deem not attractive off to Mars with Elon Musk. Um, but it's really funny because did that. I was watching uh, an old movie, uh, Cloverfield, the other day. I love that movie. It's fantastic. Because uh, my nephew wants to make a found footage movie, uh, which is super easy. And I, just, I watched it, but like every single person in that party, the opening party was attractive. Like everyone was attractive. And and the only person that really wasn't attractive was behind the camera. <laughs> but you don't even know how attractive he was. Yeah. But if you look at the kind of girlfriend that you suppose you had, he'd have to be attractive. Like oh no, no, no that was the, that's the other guy. No, because the guy that films it, um is the guy that originally starts filming it and then he passes it off to um the attractive guy. No, no, the guy behind the camera is T T J Miller, I think. You know the the guy from um Deadpool. Uh, oh yes, but again, what do you mean? Again, that's not that's not an unattractive man, though. I mean, oh, I don't, I, look, he's not ugly, but he's not like you know like cream cream of the crop, like every other party guy. At that yes, but I mean, again, again, you're looking at a seven in the sea of nines. It's like you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. still a seven. True, true. Or you know. Or, or, or as I say in America, it's like it's, it's like being it's like being a seven in Arizona. It's not fair because everyone's a there's so many nines yeah. there. You just basically <laughs> you just blend into the crowd in terms yeah. of, in terms of the hotness. Yeah. Speaking of hotness, this podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Rebecca Cassell's Dawn, amazing Rising book Dawn. Se- Rising Dawn series. 
Spark of Revolution, Heated Empire, and Kingdom of Blaze. If you haven't checked this out now after me saying it a thousand times before, let me just let me just say it again. I'm a man and I don't like to read much because reading is difficult and stupid. <laughs> but I actually did enjoy these books. Yes, it's they were they were a romantic story, but there was still enough to keep a man, a Neanderthal, a imbecile, a dunce like me entertained. Check these books out. They're now available on Amazon and Kindle. I don't think she has them in physical, does she, Jamie? Or does uh, she? I don't know. We will um, find out if they're available in physical media. But I think, but you know, you have a Kindle. Come on, guys. Buy yeah. it on the Kindle and enjoy a good book series. Do it. Now, speaking of controversial topics, mm -hmm. there was something that was released this last few weeks. And it's set the internet, it's divided the internet more than a Joe Biden speech. <laughs> now, some people have said, look, the story is terrible, but visually it is spectacular. So 10 out of 10, 7 out of 10. But some people say this is an absolute travesty. Mm -hmm. And then it is absolutely it's offensive to what it represents. And you can clearly see the two camps being split in half. But some there, there are those of me, like me in the middle, who just says, can't we just enjoy a quality production for what it is? Do we always have to go back to, are they offending the source material? Because there are those on, the, on, the, on one side saying, you know, this is an affront to the source material. There are those on the other side saying, it shouldn't matter about the source material because this movie has such a great represent. It's got such great representation. I am, of course, speaking about Love in the Villa, the Netflix romantic <laughs> comedy starring Cat <laughs> Graham and Tom Hot Hooper Hopper. I don't know what his name is, but you know what? He gets to start across Cat Graham. So <laughs> screw you, dude. It is about a newly single woman who learns. <laughs> So that the Italian villa that she's booked is double booked and she has to share it with a British man, a cynical stranger. She is going to Verona, the city of love, based upon her favorite book, Romeo and Juliet. This, this teacher then obviously has to then share this room and starts a war with this man, but then realizes that there is love in the villa and maybe it was destiny that they have to stay together in this, in this, in this villa. There are some people who have said, you know, the shots are fantastic, seeing Italy all its glory. But I say no. That from a story standpoint, from an acting standpoint, casting, you could not have cast it any better. And I can see why the internet is all mad about this particular particular thing. All Because all, all I've been hearing about is we get this argument. I'm assuming this is what the argument they're referring to is. But another recommendation for me as well, apart from Rebecca Cassell's book series, <laughs> Love in the Villa, starring Cat Graham and some other actors who are less important than Cat Graham. I'm more interested to know about the source material that you speak of. Um. Romeo and Juliet, because obviously <laughs> oh. they, they do take a lot of influence okay. from Romeo and Juliet. Uh, they, even, they even quote lines, sometimes in the right context, sometimes on the right context, but essentially it's the typical teacher. She's teaching, trying to teach Romeo and Juliet to like mm -hmm. primary school teachers, like kids. It's just really a very funny opening scene where she's like reading about that she's and she's like talking about it and you think she's maybe teaching high school students yeah mm -hmm. they're about seven years old and i'm going what a great teacher what a great teacher <laughs> like <laughs> like teaching them a lesson in the classical histories and the classical arts and then you know that's teaching to a brick wall essentially so you know kudos to this to this uh, young woman and her pet snake which she got the class unless the students come from that planet in stargate where they're super smart it seems to be based upon again, based upon just glancing. It's a it's an American public school, so I'm not sure so, on how so, smart that is. Now, did you watch the whole thing, or did you just fast forward all the bits without Cat Graham? I may have fast forwarded some <laughs> scenes without Cat Graham. I that, that I will I will, I will not I will I will not like again. But thankfully, there are very few of those scenes. Mm -hmm. There was the classic scene which you love to see in these films. <laughs> One, the boyfriend breaks up with her just before the trip that they had planned together. 
dick move. Again, this Raymond our Black, or whatever his name is, is like going, oh, I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. I'm going, yo, it's cat brain. Shut the fuck up. You're like, like, if you're not feeling it, you are a goddamn robot. But you know, whatever. I'm not, you know, that's, whatever. That's a fair point. Okay, that, but that's the thing. It's like going, this is Hollywood movies where there's like stunning actors that these guys are going, I'm just not into you. It's like going, in what universe is this? You know, whatever. Yeah. She loses her luggage at the end, obviously. <laughs> Let me stop right there. I can imagine them reading the reading the script. And he's like, I'm not feeling this line here, but but it's yeah, you break up with it, but I'm not feeling yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so, yeah, exactly, it's yeah. just not something my character would do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But she loses the luggage at the airport, which is again classic, classic romantic rom-com scenario. Mm. Has to buy a new outfit, buys these tacky, like touristy clothes and when she doesn't get away when you know when she's stuck in the villa and when 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 the 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 guy the main character tom the the, the cynical wine tasting um wine expert british man basically they went what's a generic british man tom hopper he's generic enough great let's mm-hmm. get him he does his part fine i guess um yeah you know she breaks down into tears. So that, that convinces them to say he, he finds out she's allergic. He's allergic. She's allergic. Uh, he's allergic to cats, and so she plays a hilarious prank and fills his rooms up with cats. And they have a giant prank war again. Typical enemies become friends, become more, mm-hmm. and they even then at the end. I'm not spoiling this because you're going to go watch this because trust me, it is worthwhile. It's Cat Graham. It's Cat Graham. <laughs> of course, going to go watch this. They do the Roman and Juliet balcony scene. Classic classic worthwhile i'm sure there are other things that came out this week but honestly that's honestly <laughs> that's, that's not that not that i'm aware of to be honest i don't think anything else came out um one other thing that came out before i i, I double check on on jamie's interest on on various things was i've said uh, many people are saying this uh, there is a great concern about the actor matt smith um i do believe that he's scheduled for some surgery um again our hearts and minds and condolences go to matt smith for carrying the series house of dragon on his back um it, again it, it, the, the the pressure and the weight of the series on this man's spine must be enormous but god damn if, if he does not deliver i've seen him in things before obviously but the episode three this week he actually didn't speak a single word of dialogue but his acting was so great that People go, yeah, he didn't speak, but you knew exactly what he was thinking, what he was going to say, what he was doing. It's like going, because that's a man of talent. Jamie, you're not a big fan of House of Dragons or, or no? Well, I have in general. I haven't watched it. I'm probably sure I probably would like it, you know. Um, but like, I gave up on Game of Thrones way before everyone else did. Oh, I gave up before it was cool. Uh, no, I just just did. I got up to the red wedding and I was going, hey, hey. and then I was just like, I don't know, I just got distracted. Well, no, you got the ending you want. The bad guys won. So you're like, I'm great. Awesome. Yeah. Turning off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, Jamie, if you have to watch one thing that I'm going to recommend, obviously it's Love in the Villa. You're going to go home. You're going you're to go watch <laughs> oh, that. I'm cutting this, this, this podcast short. I'm going to go watch it now. Absolutely. And you <laughs> should. You should. My goodness. Anyway, <laughs> check out House of Dragons. But apart from that, Jamie... You come to an end of a series this week. Tell us about that. Oh, Last Man Standing. Mm. Mm-hmm. What did you yeah. make of the final episode? The, I, it's hauntingly I, sad. It was just yeah. so. What do you think of it? <laughs> I know it, for as an ending, I don't. I don't think it was that bad. I, it, I like the analogy. Um, and I, I I did love throughout the series the the uh you know the um in jokes if you will the the daughters saying I. I can't watch Toy Story because I keep hearing my dad's voice. Oh, that was that's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's the best line. You know? So many lines like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then when um Jay Leno's in it, and then they're talking they're talking about how he wanted to be a comedian, and, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you got your own talk show. <laughs> um, and then it's like, oh, yeah, he would, yeah, he would give up yeah. that kind of job, and then goes, oh, yeah, then they have to go work on some sitcom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's it's. Yeah, as endings go, it was pretty solid. It, was, it made me sad though. I sent you, I sent you that that a gif of um, 
John Travolta from that movie looking around going, what, what, where's what, what? <laughs> because I'm going like, what do I do now? Exactly. <laughs> I almost oh. feel like going back and watching um, Home Improvement. Mm. You know? You kind of have to, it's, you need a palate cleanse before you start something new. Yeah. Obviously this week, um, um, What's a Face came out, uh, Cobra Kai season five is now out on Netflix. Oh, is it now? Oh, yeah. Oof, awesome. But um, before you watch Cobra Kai, you're obviously going to watch Love in the Villa first, then Cobra oh, yeah. Kai. Oh, obviously. Um, that'll, obviously. Be, that'll be the first thing that pops up. Um, oh, no. That... Like, on your on your recommendations, it's going to pop up and say, yeah. do you like category and question mark? And then it says <laughs> Love of the Villa. I mean, that's, yeah. what, my, that's what my Netflix <laughs> yeah. does. I don't, know what, I don't know about your Netflix, but that's what my yeah. Netflix does. I've, um, I'm up to date with Resident Alien. There's only two more episodes left in the season, I think. Interesting. Like, and you're still saying it holds strong. Oh yeah, and then this episode um, uh, had a cameo with from George Takai. Oh, and yes, he says, "Oh my!" <gasps> he says, "Oh my!" He says he says it a lot, and then Alan Tudyk goes, "Oh my!" <laughs> like, like at some point. Uh, no, look, it's 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 getting good. Like it's because they know they've got more coming. They've they're you know doing a bit more in depth um stuff now what do you make of the um what do you make of the character the, the astra uh, 12 trees what do you what do you what do you, what do you, what do you how do you she, find her i pref- i actually prefer the comic book version of her mm-hmm. why so but uh oh it's, it's just a uh, it's a different take um because you can just tell that while they've got certain characters from the comic book in the show they um they're doing them differently Mm-mm. like the mayor in the comic book is heaps like i just see him like the like the mayor from um uh spin city ah like he looks like that and, he, and you, you can you can see it but like what they've done is they've made the mayor yet much younger and so he's kind of like the son of that mayor Okay. From the comic book, okay. like they've, they've they've made changes, but honestly, I think the show is better than the comic book. But there's these aspects of the comic book I I like because uh, the comic's less; it's more of a dark humor. But this one, because again, as you said before, if you've got Alan Tudyk, Alan Tudyk, yep, um, yeah, but you've like got to lean into the uh, to, yeah, you you'd have yeah. to lean into oh, yeah, yeah. They, they do it differently. Yeah. But Astra Astra's a great character. But um, I prefer a father. A father is like um, he's like the moral compass of everyone. The you know he's this loving, caring father. And um, yeah, I just can't think of one. I think there's one annoying character, but that's you know that's about it. Now, for a modern series to have only one annoying character, that's quite impressive. Yeah. And she's she's only in it every now and again, you know. Like that's even a, better. Yeah, that's even better that they can't that you know that you don't have more annoying characters than that. There's only one yeah. annoying character. Yep. Creating interesting characters is yeah. difficult, and so when a show manages to craft interesting characters that you know that compel and drive you and make you want to return, yeah, you have to absolutely. To the creator, and obviously then to the writing team, much like our sponsor Rebecca Cassells of the Rising Dawn series, available now on Amazon and on Kindle. Mm-hmm. Now, Jamie, you had some interesting factoids for us this oh, this yeah. uh, evening. Is that correct? More 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 headlines. Um, so I pulled this from the Not the B site. I think I sent it to you earlier this week. But did you hear about the DC? Uh, tourists electric car that died in West Virginia. I did not tell me more. Well, the local coal miners pushed it all the way to their coal mine to get it charged. <laughs> that can't be real. <laughs> no, it is real. Wait, it happened. But again, but the but, no, that can't be real. <laughs> yeah, your electric car breaks down and outside a coal mine. I just, I love stuff like that. But okay, okay, no, 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 Jamie. Yes. What do you think the over or under on on jokes about 
climate change word whilst they were pushing it. Do you think these coal miners were respectful? <laughs> or do you think they just they they lent in a bit and gave it a bit of a nudge? What, what do you what do you think? I would I would like to think that um ironically one of them would be like super like let's just say it's like how Ron Swanson works for the government, but he hates the government. So I'm gonna say that at least one of these coal miners are super concerned about the environment. They think coal, the coal industry is destroying the planet. And, uh, you know, he's, but he has to put food on the table, you know? That's interesting. Yeah, I, I would say they probably made at least 50 jokes. Oh, yeah. Good, good natured, uh, good natured jokes. Um, but fifty, nonetheless, I think I think fifty would. would yeah, be I, I think I think some would fall flat. Like they'd be like, "Oh, it's hot out here. It must be climate change," you know, or you know, you know, those kind of jokes. That is the definition of a dad joke. Yeah. But let me tell you another one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hit me up. My wife said to me recently, have you seen the dog's bowl? And I said, no, I haven't, but I can take him down if you want. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Chris, 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 Chris. Mm. <laughs> Are you proud of that one? Hmm? Are you oh. proud of that one? Mm. Um, I prefer, yeah. I, prefer, I, prefer, I prefer the really long jokes. All right, tell tell me your best dad joke then. No, I, uh, my my go to is is the one about the cows in the paddock. You know, two cows in a paddock. One said moo, the other one said hey. I was going to say that. Um, you know, like, yeah, but I prefer the long drawn out jokes that make people uncomfortable, especially when the uh when you get to the punchline and then you're just like, you made me go through five minutes. To really? hear that, yeah, like these these are the jokes my dad used to say. But um, I'll give you a shorter version. All right, all right, all right, you tell okay. me one. All right, look. So there's this kid, all right, and he's playing in the backyard. You know, it's this um, let let let's say it's it's, it's up in the Blue Mountains, but mm -hmm. you know, yep. up up near me. You know, play. I'm I'm. It's not a true story. Don't worry. I'm playing. No, the kid is playing. <laughs> uh, he, he's on his little uh little push bike. And he, you know he's about five or six years old, and and he his bike goes out of control, and he he crashes into into the bush, and he hears this hears this this noise. It's like a ding, 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 like a dinging kind of noise. Yep. So he goes towards it, and he finds this cave, and there's this monk standing outside the front of the cave. And this kid goes, "What's what's that noise?" Yes, can't tell you. You're not a monk. He's oh. Uh, and then so he forgets about it, and then years, years, years later, he, he you know, he's he's right, he's riding, you know, his his uh, off road skateboard or whatever, and then he crashes down the down the bush again, and he hears the sound, and he goes back to the cave, and then uh, the you know, what's that noise? And then the monk said, "Can't tell you, you're not a monk." So basically, you go through this part of the story over and over and over, going through all the years, dragging it out as much as possible to the point, but then you, then he's an adult, and he goes back. And he says, what's that noise? Can't tell you, you're not a monk. Okay. He says, how do I become a monk? So he goes off and he studies, he becomes a monk. Yep. Then he goes back, goes back to that, that cave. The monk lets him in and he opens the door and he looks at, he looks in. Do you want to know what was making the noise? What? Can't tell you, you're not a monk. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. You yeah. know what? <laughs> Those are the jokes that my dad used to tell me all the time. Let me tell you a much simpler and greater joke. I asked my date to meet me at the gym. She didn't show up. That's when I knew we wouldn't work out. <laughs> okay, yeah. <that's... laughs> Again! Okay, okay. Um, you, 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 these long jokes you tell, Jamie, there is yeah. a much no, easier no, no. setup. No, 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 now I've got all. Oh, no, but I've told you I like those long jokes because they're painful. Um, all right, no, here's an easy one. Why, why couldn't the, the lifeguard save the drowning hippie? Why? He was too far out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 
why why did the why did the um oh what do you call them oh what is it hipster that's right why why did the hipster burn his tongue why he drank the coffee before it was cool <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. You know what? Let, let me retort. Let me retort, young man. Why do doors do well on social media? Because wow. everyone's looking for their handles. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I got one. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, you, look... what do you call two monkeys who share an Amazon account? Primates. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These are the ones I haven't heard. Where are you getting these from? You're looking how, at them how up, many you? apples grow on a tree? Oh, I don't know. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris. Yeah. If 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 money if money doesn't grow on trees, what? <laughs> why do banks have banks have branches? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> to whoever stole my copy of Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. <laughs> Uh, go on jimmy uh, hit me with some more come on (laughs) go on man uh oh uh, i don't know you know you're putting me on the spot like i want to go chuck norris jokes but that's too easy um i wonder what happened to the chuck norris jokes wait i gave away all my batteries today free of charge (laughs) I asked my dad if I could watch TV. He said yes, but don't turn it on. <laughs> Go on, uh, Jamie. You're behind. I know I'm behind. Uh, let me think. 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 How many telemarketers does it take to change a light bulb? How many? Only one, but he has to do it while you're eating dinner. No. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. What else he got? Knock knock. Who's there? Nobel. Nobel who? Nobel. So I just knocked. Oh wow! <laughs> I sold. I I uh, sold our vacuum cleaner, Chris. It was yeah. just. It was just gathering dust. Oh. <laughs> what's that? What's that joke? The um. A man walks into into a bar with a steering wheel down his pants and the bartender says, bartender says man what what's that steering wheel doing down your pants he's like yeah they're driving me nuts <laughs> wait wait i'm afraid for the calendar its days are numbered <laughs> <laughs> um my wife said i should do some lunges to stay in shape that would be a big step forward <laughs> Did you hear about the uh, criminal that stole a calendar? No. He got 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> What's that joke? What was the joke? Remember the potato joke from Last Man Standing? Oh, what was... oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But not like I, I, we know the punchline, but not we know that like, we know the punchline, but not actually like, the the. Yeah. This guy, this guy goes to the. He's, he's going to a beach and he wants to impress the ladies. He's like, I'm gonna be wearing my speedo, and he's like, Man, just put a potato down your pants. And he goes, Man, I put the potato down my pants, but everyone just ran away from me. They, they you know, they were screaming and they were looking at me with disgust. It's like, Man, you're supposed to put it down the front. <laughs> All right, yeah. here's the one. How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? You follow the Fresh Prince. (laughs) (laughs) Dear Math, grow up and solve your own problems. (laughs) I know a surgeon who puts organs back in upside down. I told him that's not funny, but he said it was an inside joke. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Okay. What do a tick and the Eiffel Tower have in common? What? They're both parasites. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. Hey, Chris. Hmm? 
What do you call a fish with no eyes? What? Fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. How many paranoids does it take to change a light bulb? How many? Who wants to know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris. Yeah. A cheese factory exploded in France. Debris is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't trust stairs. They're always up to something. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> all right, all right. Are we done? Are we getting are we still going? No, no, no. You know what? I think I think we'll call it quits there for the evening oh, was, on the was, jokes. What was what was that? Um, no, that was a good one. Let's be the last one. Um, <laughs> this guy was was standing on the side on the street somewhere, and he had a cat with him, and there was a sign going, "My cat can talk," or "Come talk," you know, something along this line. My my cat can talk. Yep. This woman comes up and goes, "What? What's um?" Your cat can talk. He says, yeah, yeah, I'll show you. And he turns to the cat and says, hey, cat. Um, who has the greatest um, atrocities in the 20th century? And the cat goes, meow. <laughs> <laughs> and then the lady rolls her eyes and walks off. And the cat looks at him and goes, was I supposed to say Stalin? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's funny. That's a good one. All right, no mm. more, no more jokes. Right. Uh, do you have any other stories you wish to tell before we head to the main topic, young Jamie? I have one that I think you might enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, this is the headline: Sheep sentenced to three years in prison for killing a woman in South Sudan. I have so many questions. <laughs> Ask away. Did they get a confession? <laughs> um. I don't think so. Um, hang on, I'm reading the article. All right, so yeah, so the sheep full on like attacked her and broke her ribs, and then later she died. So the, the sheep actually was guilty. I, I think you know, you know it's one of those situations where you look at the scenario and you go, okay, yeah, you can't ignore what happened. <laughs> and I just found this so fascinating because this is like this happened like recently. But was there a trial? Um, I want to say yes. Was it? I mean, I mean, it's, I know it's not America or Australia or anything, but you know, no. there'd have to be some level of due process, like yeah. Well, it was found guilty, so obviously, yeah, it wasn't just like they put a ship down because it killed someone. It was like there was a trial, which means no, no, there was no, a no, man. no, no. This is the thing: they didn't kill the sheep; it got put in jail. Did they put him on the stand? Did they, was he his defendant? Like. I don't know, was he defending a ram? He was like standing on there with a, with a fan going, now this court here is bad. <laughs> I'm just a simple ram from downtown, and I can tell you that this court case without merit, sir. Without merit. <laughs> so the barnyard sheep variety from Sudan <laughs> have... have <laughs> The accents from people from South Louisiana. <laughs> oh, no, this is a simple rams here, yeah, sir. <laughs> well, you, you know, they used to actually, and I think we did a podcast on this, they actually used to do, um, put animals on trial in medieval days. See, that makes more sense. Like, um, because that was, Jamie, as you know, that was before Fauci was born. That was before <laughs> science. So uh, then obviously yeah. that made sense for the era. Well, here's the thing. The sheep was held and taken into custody at a police station. Yeah. So <laughs> then they, 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 they put a light on its face and go, like, do they, 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 they play good cop, bad cop? <laughs> I have no idea. The owner is innocent. And the ram is the one who perpetrated the crime. So, wow, look at that. Like, so, you know how in Australia, like, if, if someone's dog attacks someone, yeah. the owner is responsible. That's correct. Not in Sudan. And you know what? What? That's fair. Did the owner bite the person? No. Mm -hmm. And like, and I do feel, I do, I really feel sorry for when the when those kids get attacked by the dogs. I do. I like, I truly do. But having having a son and a dog of myself, yeah. The baby will just attack, like pull the dog's ears face and touch its eye <laughs> yeah like sometimes don't, like you're dogs don't like that <laughs> as a general really? rule are you sure 
Yeah, and to answer your question, um, there will be a court case. So it hasn't been caught yet, but there will be a court case. Oh, what I'd give to be in that, you know, can, can they live stream it? <laughs> they have to live stream that case. It is important that we see this case. I want to see what, again, I want to see what the defense will be. And like, again, I mean, this is not, you know, you know, does, will he get a lawyer? Like, will there be like, Again, there'll be evidence, footage. Will it be, will it be Dr. Doolittle? Oh. Will, will he be the translator? <laughs> Dr. D defending the innocence of... I, I smell a movie right here. <laughs> I just... Or Mr. Ed. <laughs> what? A horse with peanut butter in its mouth? <laughs> hey, that talked. Yes, yes, they fed it peanut butter so it could talk. <laughs> so yeah, I do I do like Dr. Ed. Dr. Ed. <laughs> Mr. A doctor? Ed. It's Mr. Ed. Are you sure? It's literally just a talking horse. Yeah. I grew up on it. Are you sure it's Mr. Ed? No, it, it is. is. You're right. Ed. You're right. You're right. Sure. Right. Dude, come on. Well, why was I giving him a degree? Because Dr. Doolittle, probably. Doctor Yeah, see, I get those two confused because they're both like Talking you, animals. You, well, you think you think you think they'd be in the same uh, cinematic universe? Yeah, you yeah. think absolutely they'd be in the same yeah. cinematic universe. The the do little verse. Yeah. The do verse. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. I mean, like you could even bring in like the Shaggy Dog into that universe. The talky verse. The yeah the. Or um. Uh, Homeward Bound. Remember that movie? Yeah. No, but like the the universe is obviously talking animals. Mm -hmm. So basically. 100% Dr. Doolittle and Mr. Red. And every Disney movie. <laughs> every Disney movie is, on, yeah, is in that, that same universe. And obviously Yogi Bear. Oh, yeah. Will also be in the same universe. See, again, cinematic universe. Not sure why no one's pursuing this particular particular franchise. No, they're too busy destroying other cinematic universes. Or trying to make cinematic universes where one doesn't exist, like that. You remember that mummy movie that was meant to be the launching of oh, the cinematic yeah. universe? Yeah, and and the thing is, like, it sounded like it would have been a good idea. They it would just, have been. It would have been a great made, idea. They just made a bad. Um, they just made a bad movie. Yeah, well, because I think it was supposed to be um, Luke, Luke Evans. Yeah, the, the Dracula. Dracula. The Dra yeah, him as Dracula. Yeah. Um, and then like the swamp creature from the Black Lagoon. Yep. Like all of the famous monsters from the monster from monster movies, I was like, yes, actually, actually, you know what? That is actually something I would absolutely want to yeah. see. They just chose the worst possible movie to lead it off with that, that yeah. killed the franchise. Yeah, by putting like, uh, Tom Cruise in it <laughs> again. Tom Cruise, much like a baseball player, hits one every you know <laughs> every yeah. few pitches and. Uh, a lot of a lot of his movies are like they're good premises. Like, and that's the thing with Tom Cruise. You get, you'll get your, you know, your Top Guns. You'll get your, you know, your these absolutely top flight films, and then you'll get absolute crap. Yeah. Which brings us to our main topic: <laughs> actors whose records are spotless. Now, this is a long and this is a difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. But every actor that we know of has done some terrible movies for money or because they were bored or because they knew the director or because the director had some sort of blackmail upon them. Shall, we, we, shall we call it the Nick Cage effect? The Nick Cage effect of <laughs> or, or the Wesley Snipes I don't pay taxes kind of effect. Either one. Either one works. But as we realize, there are some exceptions that, you know, against this particular rule. And there are some actors who, who we're going to make that we believe have near perfect or at least spotless records. Jamie, mm -hmm. when you think of these actors, what actor you think? Well, tell me an actor that you believe is spotless well, and his record is beyond repute. Well, I think that, I mean, there's obviously Tom Hanks, although... There is a few where I'm like, eh, there you go. Now, Tom Hanks. Now, 
Are we talk again? Are we talking about his more re- the later stuff where he's? Mm, well, I think overall, really. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Like, let's walk through. I mean, because I, he was fantastic in the he did, he was in Elvis, the Elvis movie. Okay. And mm-hmm. he was fantastic in that. But there's a few like uh, off the top of my head that Cloud Atlas movie is supposed to be pretty stupid. Oh, I heard it was. Again, but you've not seen it, so that's yeah. a, that's hearsay, speculation. No, all right. Well, all right. Are, are we going through his? So let's go through his record, from start to finish, or from from recent to. Well, let's just you know, I mean, okay, let's, okay. Let, 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 there's some. He was in, in some series. We can probably say you know that's your starting oh, wow. gigs. He was uh, in Happy Days. On a single episode. There we go. Look yeah. at that. See, there's a lot I, I haven't. seen like especially the earliest stuff. I'm going to go find the the first one that I know. Turner and Hooch. That was a pretty good movie. That was a fantastic that is a fantastic film. That's probably the first one I ever saw him in. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole lot of other stuff. Oh, and then, you know, random stuff. But then there's A League of Their Own. Another fantastic Now, film. you've obviously missed out on Splash. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I saw Splash. A young man who's around with a mermaid who, who saved a mermaid from drowning or and then they fall in <laughs> love. Like, come on. Classic boy meets girl. I honestly you know. haven't seen it. Mm. Main, the, the mermaid's name is Madison, as we all know. There, if you're going to talk about a, a hot girl's name, it has to be Holy or Madison. Did she have a valley girl accent? No, it can't be that perfect. <laughs> there's only, there's, again, there, there are some perfect things in the universe. That is one of them. How do you feel about Sleepless in Seattle? Great film. <laughs> is that your favorite rom com? No, it it it. <sighs> prior prior to Love in the Villa. Okay, okay. Let's let's pretend that <laughs> let's pretend that Love in the Villa does not exist. Yeah. Your Tom Hanks romantic comedy rom com movie. Yes, you have to say it stands above others. Now, is that Sleepless in the is that Sleepless in Seattle or You've Got Mail? Oh. I don't know. They're both pretty, you know, watchable. <laughs> they are. They're both very good. Uh, I can't, well, I can't well, honestly... Let's, let's set the scene, Chris. You've, you've got a... It's it's the 90s, right? Yep. You've, uh, you know, you, you your parents let you invite your lady friend around. Mm-hmm. Parents are, you know, they're going to give you your space. Of course. You got your, you got your uh, bottle of Pepsi. You got, you've, you've ordered your cheese pizza. Of course. You're on the couch, and you're watching. What are you watching? Which one? Whoa. Because you cannot watch both, because you're a guy. <laughs> you can't be caught binge watching rom coms. Sleepless in Seattle. That because it's got Bill Pullman in it. <laughs> and who doesn't like the Bill Pullman? <laughs> he, yeah, he's fantastic. He's another underrated um, actor. But he's got, you know, he's got a lot. He's got a lot of that you'd call it crud on his resume. But <laughs> look, going through Tom Hanks's movies from Philadelphia, Big, Sleepless in Seattle, League of Their Own, um, Forrest Gump. My God, like. Apollo um, 13. Yep. Toy Story. Or Saving Private Ryan. Toy Story 2. Green Mile. Cast Away. Hey, you, skipped over, you skipped over one of the finest music movies of all time. That Thing You Do. Yeah, which, I'm not a big which, fan of that movie. Which was, I, I, which was I, his... It was his de- um, direct... Director... Directorial. Debut. Yeah, directorial yeah. debut. It's a fantastic film. Yep. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And then obviously, yeah, you got the look, look. Road to Petition's good too. Road to Petition's a very good film, absolutely. It's just, there's, it comes down to like everyone I've seen is good. You know, and there's, there's a lot of that I haven't seen. But still, speaking of just in an overall general view, looking at the man's resume. You'd have to say that's close to that's as close to perfect as you're going to get from yeah. an actor. Now, have you seen Pinocchio yet? <laughs> I have not. 
I've heard mixed things. Well, it's funny. So because, that because, might because... destroy the man's <laughs> perfect stellar record. <laughs> no, because I, I watched it today. Like IGN did a, re- a review on it, and they're mm-hmm. getting like five five out of ten or whatever. And then some in the comments, someone goes, "Yeah, but you gave She Hulk a nine. Oh. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, um, okay. you know. So, so, it, so... it might it might be all right, but it's just like how. From what I've heard, is it, it tries to stay tr- stay true to the original, mm-hmm. so it's like how kind of like Beauty and the Beast when they did the live action version, they basically did it shot for shot, word for word, and they added added a bit added a bit more you know depth to it. So I I didn't mind Beauty and the Beast. For that I reason. thought that was one of the better of the Disney remakes. Yeah, well, well, obviously you know before they re- thought that they could do it with everything like. Jungle Book was great. Sure. Um, Beauty and the Beast. That's about it for me. <laughs> I can't think of any. What did you feel about Aladdin? Not a fan. And it's and it's because Robin Williams. Mm. You know? Like, you just... You can't. No, no, no. You know? And then and, and the, there's only one good thing about the entire thing. Naming Scott? No, nah, yeah. Of, of course. Like, and then everyone, and like Jafar was not threatening at all. I'm going like, I'm yeah. not, like I, I would have no trouble running up to Jafar and punching him in the face. Like, he went with a very shy, whispery evil. It's like, hi. That's not I'm evil. Jafar. That's just creepy. Like, like, honestly, Jafar 4, oh no, Aladdin 4, Jafar might need glasses, probably would have been a better film. <laughs> That would have, yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, let's look at another man's acting resume. Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah. Fantastic guy. Except he does have the, I think he falls ill to the, he's got one, like he doesn't do accents. It's just like, I'm Denzel. But, but when you're Denzel. Yeah, yeah look, I'm, <laughs> when... I'm, I'm saying that. Like, he's a phenomenal actor. It's just that he, he's like, you know, this is what I do. This is my style, and it is phenomenal. Like, I'm yep. not saying it's bad or anything. I'm just saying yep. it's, you know. And he, um, actually, bonus yep. points to him because he actually, um, sponsored Chadwick Boseman. Well, there you act- go. For acting and all that. Now, looking at his resume, you've got some classics. Glory. That was, you know, oh, actually, yeah. I very much like that movie. Um, Oh, Courage and Fire. What else we've got here? Training Day. Come on. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, come on. Man on Fire. Come on. Oh, Deja Vu. Yeah. Inside Man. The Siege. American Gangster. The Siege. Oh, my book of it. What? A, I mean, look at that run. Look at that run in the two, early 2000s. Holy oh, cow. I remember, I remember our friend Michael being obsessed with John Q. Mm, yep, yep, yep. Um, even like that Deja Vu movie was weird and I enjoyed it. It was still like good. weird, but yep, I, still good. I enjoyed it. Um, Safe House was pretty good. Yep. I liked Two Guns with... um. Oh, who was it with? I want to say Wahlberg. Probably yeah. a Wahlberg. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg and Denzel Washington. It that sounds like a good. Mark Wahlberg movie. And they're doing the Equalizer 3. There you go. Look, but they you know, of uh, underrated um, Telegram, uh, taking a Telegram one, two, uh, one, two, three. That actually was a very good movie. I actually really like that one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the Magnificent Seven. That was fantastic. I, I know a lot of people hate it, but man, they shouldn't. It was fantastic. It was a great was, film. Yeah, and it was like I think the director wanted to, he wanted to do a movie with Chris Pratt, and he wanted to do a movie with Denzel Washington, and he got them both in the same film. So you yeah. know. You're, when, when you do that, you are clearly, clearly win, winning. Now, yep. honestly, this record might be even stronger than, than Tom Hanks's now that I'm looking at it. Because <laughs> yeah. it's... Yeah, I can't... Yeah, I, this might be a touch stronger. What, what, do you, what, what do you land on that? What do you land I, on I, this? I honestly think it's Denzel. Denzel stretches ahead now tom hanks is in a lot more notable like or well-known i'd say like more popular 
mm-hmm. mainstream when Denzel's done a lot of um, low key independent oh, stuff as I well. Mean, remember the Titans? Oh yes. Come on, we'll, turning we'll day. About, we'll be talking about that next episode. Yep. Um, Inside Man, American Gangster is still one of my favorite movies to watch. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, that's a, that is a and Book of Eli was is is just is an absolute gem. gem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely underrated. Just mm-hmm. wow. What an amazing film! It's even even the, even when you know the trick, uh, yeah. you, when you watch it again, it's still it's still just yeah, fantastic. Yeah, but you, you don't notice it, you know. No, no, exactly. And then and then you notice it. You go, how did I miss that? Yep. And then when you then you know, then you watch it again, and you're going, oh, like it's so clear, but then it's not. Yep. It's you know, it's fantastic. Now, stronger, strong, strong strong record now let's talk about one more let's talk, let's talk about another actor let's, let's throw another name in the mix what about um christopher walken christopher walken does it do, i don't know I, I feel like he's he's quantity over quality i think so uh i was thinking more of kevin bacon kevin bacon interesting is that because your favorite movie is footloose of course. Because <laughs> he was also in Apollo 13. <laughs> no, bring it all together. But, you know. Well, I don't know how much I actually know of his stuff. That's that's my problem. But you know of Footloose, don't you? I know, I know of Footloose. I've never seen Footloose. But you know of Footloose. I know of Footloose. It's and almost it, as impressive. And, and it, it did come out the year I was born. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I'm going through his stuff. Like, I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. Didn't Oh, he did Tremors. Tremors mm-hmm. was fun. The air up there. That's a good one. Um, he was in Fraser. <laughs> he was in Fraser. Yep. Apollo 13. See, I just, I don't recognize most of his stuff. But there is a lot of it. He's done it. I think it's, I think it's quantity. You think there's another quantity over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, look, I, I think, I think that's a, a respectable, a respectable decision. Uh, he's done a lot of films, but he was in R.I.P.D. So, <laughs> okay, so he takes a paycheck. So the man <laughs> takes a paycheck again. I'm not faulting the man from taking a paycheck, but you know, yeah. Nah, man, he hasn't got many hits. What about our our man Henry Cavill? Yes, mm, that's a lot of crap in there, mate. You reckon? Yeah. Have you have you looked recently? Oh, look, he did The Witcher. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh yeah, he did Stardust. <laughs> it was in the Tudors. Your show, the Tudors. I did like that show. Immortals. I remember you liking Immortals. That's all right. It was pretty good. Came I don't know, man. Man of Steel. The man from Uncle was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sadly, he was in Batman versus Superman, but but we know there's only the downfall of that movie was only from one line. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Now, how do you feel about him being in in both cuts of Justice League? <laughs> <laughs> One of them I'm okay with. <laughs> yeah, he has, he actually hasn't done that much. No, probably, no. probably because he's only like forty. <laughs> he's also English. Remember, yeah, like an English t- an English television show is like four episodes is a single season, and then there's you know, yeah. Now look, I think he's got potential. He could go all the way. What about some 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 lady actresses? What what are some of the big ones? Obviously, the top of that one would be Meryl Streep. I think that's I, uh, these movies are things I don't like. Yeah, but, but, they but became, yeah, but you know, respect the craft. Judy Dench would be a good one as well. Yep, Jane Judy Dench. Yep, Mama, you know, Devil Wears Prada. I hate that film, but again. Don't ask, don't tell my wife I hate that film. Um, no, you're allowed to hate that film. My brother in law loves that film. Um, and <laughs> remember when he won't listen, so it's all right. You remember, like, he hated Anne Hathaway, like, he just hated, oh, uh, yeah, for a weird passion. reason. There was no like, real reason why he there was hated no real Anne reason. Hathaway. Oh, she's just so red. Everyone loves her. I'm mean, like, I don't love her, I just I think she's a good actress, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, Anne Hathaway. 
Sophie's Choice, geez, if any, uh, you know, you know, Meryl Streep, uh, you know, I think it's, yep, that's a damn fine record. Yep. What else do you have, Jamie? Um, I'm taking a gander at Judy Dench, but she's done a lot of Bond. <laughs> and, and she did the Pierce Brosnan Bonds, so. Hey, they were fine at the time. <laughs> And and we, we got Sean Bean with those. I think I think for the female actresses, you'd have to go back to some of the really old ones. All right, yeah. Like you're almost going back to like Elizabeth Taylor, like um, Catherine Hepburn, almost like kind of that thing where it's like actually, yeah. although, although those, it's unfair to compare those actresses against modern actresses because they're only like yeah. three or four actresses, and so they're in every major film and they they won all the awards. Bit different, like you know, right. now just for fun, we're going to go through Cat Graham's record <laughs> <laughs> and see if Chris approves. It is a no, no, you will not find a singular terrible thing within yeah. that. Oh, wow, she was in Malcolm in the Middle. Um, <laughs> uh, she's done a lot of TV, the OC, CSI. She's, yeah, she's a TV actor. She was in a Nelly um, music video, Chris. She's also a, a singer and songwriter. In, of, she's, like, she does lots of songs. And she does, she has had the, she has the greatest song, uh, Jamie, that you will have to YouTube and watch. It is called, <laughs> it's, called uh, it's called Boyfriend's Back. And it is about to have a boyfriend's back. And she thinks mm-hmm. she's going to dump him. But don't tell him nothing. She thinks she's going to dump him. Jamie, I'm, I'm, we're, actually, we're gonna pause this episode right now, and I need you to go watch this thing right now. Like, I'm gonna no, no, no. I'm like, bring out, pause it, pause it, and you're gonna watch basically art. All right, what's it called? It's Cat Graham. Type in boyfriends back, and watch, watch, and watch this. Just you know, absolutely stellar. Like, oh, it's gonna happen in real time. I typed in boyfriends back, and it, uh, some weird stuff came up. <laughs> Yeah. Cat- is it Katarina Graham? Cat Graham, yeah, Katarina Graham. Cat Graham. Okay. And it's, and it's, you know, the first clip should come up. It's and is it her in the classroom? Yes. That is okay, it. cool. I got it. I don't know what I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching art, Jamie. I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> I feel like this is a flashback to you making me watch Hellcats. Sure, they're attractive, but this is some awkward hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, do I have to watch the whole thing? This is the longest two minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> she wants to dump someone, Chris. Yep. That's a waste of talent. All right, I'll, I'll, all right let's just unpause and re 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 down the episode. <laughs> Okay, I, I, uh, yeah. So, Jamie, if you can guess the subtleties of that song, her boyfriend is back, but she thinks she wants to dump him. And she's asking all the ladies, are they tired of their boyfriends acting shady? This is very key elements of the song, and I think it's key messaging to all young women. So, again, this song and her acting career stands above the others, obviously, clearly. Okay. Like, yeah. I think that's a, I think, just, you know. If there is a winner of the female greatest actress, Cat Graham, that is a clear and cut, clear cut winner. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you can disagree. I mean, again, you can disagree all you want. You would be wrong, but you can disagree. No, look, no, look. I, if if I was out and about and she said, "Hey, you want to get a drink?" I don't drink, and I'd be like, "Yes, I will get a drink," <laughs> because it's Cat Graham. Of course, but. but uh, might be a little different if if it was that cat Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I would just feel like awkward. I'd be like, okay. what? <laughs> greatest <laughs> song. I think I want to dump him. Greatest song. She has other ones as well. Quite good. <laughs> Worthwhile checking out. Is all the other of one? Her is the other one called called um? My boyfriend's back, and I'm not gonna dump. Yep. No, she has one called Graffiti, and that's a great song. You should, again, 
you know, multiple, multi-talented. Do you think okay, dancing, you want, singing, you, acting, triple okay. threat, right there? You you were first introduced to Cat Grime uh, Vampire Diaries. Absolutely, yes, yes in Vampire Diaries, hundred percent. So then you went back and watched those. Absolutely, hundred percent. Do you think it would be a little bit different if you first saw her boyfriend's back video clip and then? What an in, what you know what an interesting hypothesis and no, uh, kind of like how John Travolta started in Greece and then he goes under all this hardcore, you know, movies like Pulp Fiction and and you know all that stuff. It's like I, I Greece wasn't the first thing I saw John Travolta in, so yep. I have a different kind of like okay, I've seen him do some stronger less cheesy stuff but i don't know how i'd feel if i first saw this you know sandy you know you're saying things that have some merit that mm-hmm. particularly with john travolta if you saw him in greece you'd probably feel differently um that the same way if you saw mr mom before you saw you know batman with um in with um Heating, you might feel a little bit more d- differently about mm-hmm. Batman. I mean, yeah. that again, that is that is again, um, you know, yeah, that makes you know that makes some logical sense. But let me tell you something about Cat Graham and those that fantastic <laughs> song. Please, there is just sometimes there is just undeniable talent, and the talent there in in the words. The lyrics, the dancing and performance is why when we're talking about actors with spotless records, I think, Jamie, you and I both agree. We've looked at Mel Streep, Catherine Hepburn. We've looked at Denzel Washington, Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, but clearly Cat Graham stands shoulders (laughs) above the others as the clear and undisputed winner and title holder of the strongest actor in the world. Does that count that she's because she's pretty young, so she hasn't had a chance to? Because oh, again, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up. Imagine how many awards she'll have when she's Meryl Streep's age. Imagine, just <laughs> think on on the prestige that she will be able to accumulate over the uh... years after having such a strong start in her career. Okay, I, uh, I'll take that under consideration. <laughs> You'll take that under consideration. You'll go and watch Love in the Villa like the rest of us have and enjoy a fantastic <laughs> film. Again, when there, there are some things that are undeniable and sometimes there are sometimes we have to stop and recognize talent like Cat Graham and our sponsor, Miss Castles, who writes the <laughs> Rising Dawn series available on Amazon. Now, Jamie, <laughs> before we part, do you have any final messages you'd wish to share with our listening audience? Oh, you know, the usual. Like, subscribe, share. Um, Comment if you agree or disagree of, yes. on, on who is the greatest actor actress of, of all time. Clearly, there is one correct answer. But again, <laughs> I, 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 am un, I am not biased. So yeah. I will listen to your opinions before I tell you that you're wrong. But, <laughs> but you know, what, yeah. again, not biased. And, um, and as you know, we've got, a, we got a Rebecca Castles on as a, as a sponsor. You can do that too if you head over to buymeacoffee. No, yeah, buymeacoffee slash S. Well, I'll put the link in the show notes. I think it's buymeacoffee.com slash S-T-T-A-T-F. The link will be in the show notes. There'll be a little spiel down there. Um, and you can jump on and we can give you some wonderful promotion on our fancy little podcast and tune in next week as we go through Cat Graham's filmography <laughs> in an in-depth one-on-one scenario and we as we as we break down all her greatest roles achievements and of course let us not forget her humanitarian aid with UNICEF which again is why she's better than everyone else <laughs> and on that note, I'll bid you adieu.